we'd been to Ireland, Southern Ireland, and we'd visited um, two strange old sisters called the Miss Collinses. Um, they lived in a very tumble down house. They wore um, sacking um, aprons and they offered me an egg to suck <laughs> as refreshment. And I did ask them, I remember asking them whether I could draw their faces. And uh, sometimes the response to that is no, uh, you know, horror. But they were very pleased. And so I got um, two faces. They, they look pretty similar. One um, more face up front on and the other profile. I used the profile one in the, um, the first uh, image of Granny. I think that one, I used the hair on the little girl, the way the hair kind of is thick and it, it, um, it flies out in, in that fashion there. The first draft, I obviously um, was barking completely up the wrong tree and so I have rather put it away and felt um, I didn't really want to show it much. Um, until I looked at it again and was rather amazed how utterly different it was from what it became. The little girl, she's, she's all wrapped up. She's always hugging herself. She, um, I, I never really let go of the girl. It's, it, it's as though it's all tight and unformed at this stage. I can see in this picture, um, I was beginning to get the tree and the, the birds in the tree. Um, but, and I can see in this picture, I was beginning to get the chase. But interestingly, there's very little tog. It was almost like I was wrapping myself up like the little girl, afraid to confront tog. So tog hardly appears. I think this is where uh, he, he's um, most evident. Um, I was using crosshatch and um, it, 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 it was as though this, it, it didn't really match my father's verse. It, it was too conventional. So at some point I was going to have to find a much more original uh, way of um, doing these paintings. It was as though I had to go much further and deeper somewhere to arrive at the more scary aspect of it. This, this is quite nice and it doesn't really fit the, the, the poem. And I think the problem with the first draft was it, it had all sorts of other people's influences and it didn't have enough of um, my own personal um, history, geography. I hadn't at this stage um, worked out borders and I think that was really crucial to the thing moving forward as well. Um, I think that the idea of the border and things getting in and out of the border and then the border itself exploding as it were or, or um, falling apart into a double page spread um, I, I know I was very excited by that idea and that was what was leading me forward and although I had terrible time constraints because I was feeding a young baby, um, I, was, I remember being terribly excited and couldn't wait to get back to it and get on with it. The idea of the frame was that the little girl um, within the frame on that page is frightened by the tog and clambers out of the frame and, and a lot of the birds fly out of the frame. So then you have the chase with the little girl running outside the frame. It looks quite peaceful within the frame <laughs> and you're longing for her to be able to get back to inside the frame. And um, more and more um, of the uh, creatures are getting onto the left hand page until we get here and it's virtually a double page spread um, and there she is caught outside the frame. 
the frames, in effect, followed the dynamic of the poem um, up to the the, the um, crisis, and then so they they um, it, it's as though the whole framework and the borders exploded. When I come to doing the finished artwork, um, the the original artwork for the book, I'm using a very complex. Um, way of texturing the page and again th that that was the thing that um, gives it its character in that um, I'm using masking fluid uh, which I pull with my finger and I create little holes where those holes are very small you get a kind of stippled effect um, when you Gla do a wet glaze of paint over it. So, for example, here you've got the stippling. It's always like a sort of printmaking effect, and I think that I can't printmake. I would have done it as a printmaker if I could. So, I was trying to find a means of getting a texturing. Now, where you pull the um, masking fluid, f which has dried in a rubbery film further you get bigger holes uh, almost a lacing effect and you can see the directions I've been pulling that way that way on the tree and fanning out in this picture um, what happens with the larger holes in the um, masking fluid is that when I put very wet glazes of acrylic paint on, um, the paint accumulates where the lip of the masking fluid is greater. Um, and that creates almost like a marbling effect, just naturally of its own, um, own accord. And I... Um, Possibly you might glaze over two or three times and I might dab a bit um, so that when I finally, when it's all dry, pull off all the um, masking fluid, um, I'm, I'm left with um, a, a, a textured page which I then start to work on. So when I came to do the colour artwork, um, I, I was working in acrylic on CS board, um, which is a strippable board. And um, this meant that um, I used tracing paper to get the design onto the board in pencil and then worked in, um, in paint. Um, because you could strip off the top of uh, the surface of this board, uh, it did mean that if you made an error very late on, you could correct it. And um, the line of the um, sheet in this page um, probably um, looks quite a strong line. Uh, that's because it's cut. <laughs> I, I, the fingers went a bit wrong. And I'd pretty well finished the whole spread. And you can see how I would never have managed, um, because there was so much chance in the, the um, masking fluid technique, I could never have recaptured all that. So I cut out that with a craft knife, removed the offending bit, um, inserted a, a new bit of um, the top layer of the CS board and repainted it. So that was one of the big advantages of um, using this CS board. And I think with this texture, it, it, it felt natural almost, some of these shapes. It was a, like a distortion of nature. And my father was doing a distortion of language. So um, I think once I'd hit on that, I was happily distorting. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, the images through um, the natural images. Then I sent it to Pam Royds at Andre Deutsch and uh, Pam 
gulped, I expect, <laughs> and said this was very different from anything else I'd done. And she said, I'll show it to the sales team, but um, I'm not sure um, we've got a niche for this book. And then she rang me back the same day. She said, I showed it to the sales team. They're going to create a niche for this book. 